So in this lecture, we're going to start covering the basics of querying PARS. Querying your PARS server, your PARS database, is really just a way of asking questions of your data and then getting results and getting an answer. Now, depending on the database system that you have, you can ask questions in different ways. Unlike any other database system, PARS has its own way of interacting and asking questions of your data. And that's what we're going to start to cover in this lecture. So like as per usual, let's start off by adding the relevant sections to the top of the page. So let me copy and paste from here. We need to parse initialize and add the parse server URL there. And for this lecture, for this example of, of querying, we're going to start using the team. Oh, hopefully that will refresh in a second. There we go. We're going to use the team data set. So these are football teams in soccer, I should say, soccer teams in the United Kingdom English Premier League. They've finally got it out. And these are the football players who play in the English Premier League. So we're going to use these two data sets. Now they're quite large data sets. There's 527 players and there's 20 teams. We're going to use these two data sets in these lectures where we're going to cover querying. So we're going to ask questions about players and teams. Okay, so the first thing we need to define in our JavaScript file are the classes that are related to player and team. So we've always got the team class and the player class. And then to ask questions of your database, you need to use a parse query class or an instance of a parse query class. Now we've done this before when we had to get an individual instance from the database. So we're going to, just like before, we're going to create a new parse query. And for this one, we're going to use team. Okay, so I just like to call it Q. You could call it query, or you could call it whatever you want. I just like to call it Q just because I create so many of them. And with this query object, so with this query instance, you can then start to ask questions. Now, for instance, one thing we can ask it is return me all data with the equal to function. So this is saying return all teams with a code column or the code property equals MCFC. So the code being here. So if we go team name, so that's player, sorry. If we go to team code, so there you go. This is a code string. So this is Manchester City Football Club and their code is MCFC. These two lines is, is really just setting up the query, is really just setting up the kind of question we want to ask. It hasn't actually sent a request to the server yet to actually perform this query and return. To do that, we need to type q.find, and this actually goes away and sends the request to the server. But, but with querying, the useful part of it isn't sending the request to the server, it's getting, it's getting the response back and doing something with it. So to do that, we use a promise. So q.find returns a promise, a promise that's resolved when the query is returned from the server. So to hook into that with promises, we use dot then, and then we pass in a function. We create a function which will be called when that query returns from the server. So I expect this query to return a number of items. So I'm gonna have a variable called results. So when this query, query returns, I'm expecting a number of items and therefore this result should be an array. So let's just add some console logging so we know what's going on. Just we know this is the equal to query because I plan to write quite a few. And let's just print out the results as is. In fact, what I want to do is I want to use the actual console. So let's get rid of the console tab here just because this console this browser console just gives us a bit more a bit more information so it's clear oh but I do need to be able to run it which I can't unless I have the console so here we go so let's run this in fact I wonder if I can yeah okay I just need this run button okay let me run it okay so here you go so this is the object this is the array that got returned on the right hand side here so the array only has one item, zero. And if I look at it, the ID is van, J, K, O, K, F, O, three. Now, if I want to see the attributes from here, I can just click these three symbols 
and I've opened the attributes and there you can see these are the columns from the database. So we've got code, name, short name, squad market value updated at. These are the values from the database. So you can see we've actually, it actually has performed the query and it's returned one item, which is the item we were expecting. If I had done a query which returned multiple items, the results would be an array with multiple items in it. If the query returned no items, if there were no teams with the code MCFC, this results would be an empty array. Okay, so that's fine. Another thing we can do, let me copy and paste this. If we know that we're expecting one result, or we don't really care which one we want, we just want a result from a set, we can actually just call first. Okay, so first runs the same query as before, but just returns the first item. Now we know this has an item, this has one result, so let's just print that out here. Okay, so let me clear that, clear that, hit run. So there you go, so this is the log line from line 18, and again, this is actually just the uh, Manchester City Football Club getting printed out. So we're not getting, when you use first, you don't get returned an array. You just get returned the first item in the array you would have got if you ran find. And if you, if there's no results, if the results would have been blank, then this would just return. Let's find out what it would return. And if you were to run some code, which would have an empty array, it would just return undefined. So the object here would just be undefined.